Before this building exists, somebody has imagined it. It's the pyramids of Egypt. I was 13 years old, and I was lucky to be inside these pyramids and realized that less than 5% of the building is actually efficient, usable space. But there are mission of certain projects that will become moments that will freeze the history of civilization. And some years later, when I was 18 years old, I applied to certain career, but I was rejected from the university. Uh, so I have arrived to architecture only by accident, uh, and I learned that it was very important to solve a specific uh, technical solutions to make these type of projects available. The Egyptian people have solved the amount of energy you need to bring actually this size of stones towards the upper part of the pyramid. And as civilization evolves, I am convinced that our tools evolve that will help us to define and design a better environment. In certain moments of the history of architecture, visionary people have developed extraordinary uh, understanding of the potential of architecture. As the Medici has brought type of architecture that transformed the landscape in Florence, certain moments of the civilization have developed buildings that are going to be thought to become temporary structures, but at the end they will become buildings that will define even the identity of a city. As an architect, I am convinced that what we do in our daily life is we try to solve problems. We build concepts with our clients, we develop with engineers the best solutions, as for example in this private villa that we develop in Mexico City, where we try to reduce the footprint and create the living space as the center of all the villa. And let me show you one of our earliest projects, the first steps in our practice. We were invited to design a little space for the children that belongs to the generation of the iPad. The parents used to live in a very modern house, beautiful villa from Latin America, and the concept we built was to create a building that uh, continuously creates both the ramp that connects to the garden and also the space that will become their shelter. One of the kids was collecting shells, so we thought that was a great concept to do a building that wraps in itself and was doing the two performances uh, needed by the program, to connect to the garden and to solve the structure. This very small project became very important in our practice because it was going to have the DNA of many of our future structures. Being Mexico, a young democracy was extremely important to realize how we can do this type of structures with the freedom we have in terms of restrictions. This is the user running from the apartment of their parents, of course a very modern, typical house, and then coming inside his own space. And for us, what was very important of this project was to try to explore the possibilities of how technology can develop architecture that can connect with that generation. And further, I have explored the meaning of context as a fundamental aspect of architecture, and I have realized that recently, the meaning of context has evolved to different directions and different understanding. The next project I would like to show you is a museum we developed in Mexico, uh, a museum for one of the most important collections in Latin America that has the second more important collections of uh, sculptures of Auguste Rodin. I consider Rodin one of the pillars of modern art since he has achieved something unique that was the extraordinary talent to create perfect beauty, but also to begin to explore the possibilities of imperfection as he was leaving certain pieces of the sculpture unfinished. As part of the challenges of architecture, I start to design the building on one side, and then together with the client, we realized that actually the site in front was a better site to develop the building. So we came with a concept that was about how to translate the collection in the floor plans of the building, and about how to solve a museum in six floors of exhibition. We developed with uh, local engineers a solution that was based in the idea of having 28 columns that take 70% of the loads of the building. We solved with our local engineers how to actually build the project on record time. And then finally, we integrated all the drawings to actually build it on the time that we were developing the project. 
And in the history of architecture, there are certain buildings that have particular sections, unique sections, that make them uh, pieces of architecture that can become icons in their cities. This is the essence of the project. You have 28 columns that are acting as an arch in tension, and then you have a floating roof at the top. Uh, enables that to create a balance of ecosystem, because that roof is bringing back the structure in. Enable that to have 70 meters open span at the top floor for the exhibition of sculptures. And then we organize in a very efficient way all the rest of the floor plans. In the process was always very present the Taj Mahal, because the Taj Mahal is a building that was designed for a woman that has already passed away, and this was the case of this museum. This is the structure built in one year. And this is a little video that shows you the building on site. It used to be an industrial site. That's the reason you see the train passing by. And here you have a certain sense of the scale of the building against the landscape. This is a video that shows how we build the project. So we have the 28 columns. We build the slab, then we cover it. It will become the floor plant, the front of a big master plan of 1 million square meters of construction. When you get inside the museum, you have an open vestibule, very quiet, silent, that becomes a filter with the city. And then you have the thinker that suggests the unlimited potential of our intellectual capacity. Inside, you will visit one of the most diverse collections in Latin America. Uh, extraordinary visionary entrepreneur has give the opportunity to the population and community to visit free art forever. Millions of people have visited the building, and I think that partly it's because the building has been developed in such a way that we use contemporary technology tools to design the building. And the reality is that this building cannot be built in different time. When you have 1,000 different hexagons uh, of different sizes, and when you have a skin that actually express the deformations of all the surface, then you realize the complexity of how the building has been crafted. And I think that the population that go next to the building realized that this building was partly a result of the technology they are carrying in their hands. So the agenda of architecture goes towards to have a more responsible, green, sustainable solutions. Uh, we have designed this villa for somebody that is obsessed with football. It's a, we a weekend uh, villa that basically has little features that make the building more efficient, like these courtyards that bring natural light, but also uh, green uh, tissue that makes more efficient the heat of the building and keep it warm and calm in the, in the summer and the winter. This building has inspired another important commission for us that was to design convention center for the G20 that has just gathered in Mexico in Los Cabos. This building needed to be extremely efficient in terms of costs. Uh, it needed to be an ideal platform where the leaders can gather together and talk about contemporary problems. The building needed to be extremely avant-garde in terms of the effectiveness of how it used their energy. So we brought the, the biggest green wall in the planet for reducing the heat in the building. We cover all the panels in the roof to be able to produce solar energy. And we built the building in only seven months in record time in a place that was not even water. And this building became the platform for a successful meeting where global warming was not the primary issue to discuss, but was the economy. And the building needed to be an extremely peaceful place where they can enjoy the ocean of Los Cabos, but also where they can have uh, important meetings about the environment and about the economical context. And only far away from that place, in the border between Mexico and the United States, exists one of the most complex situations in the planet that is related with immigration. This is a normal image of people crossing the border, the river Rio Bravo. And this is a normal image of people trying to cross the border every day through the trucks to find employment conditions in more developed contexts. This is only part of the momentum that has been created, the huge contrast between the two countries, Mexico and the United States. This is people on top of a train in Central America called La Bestia, 
searching better opportunities and trying to travel to the northern countries. This is an analysis that we have developed of some of the most contrasted regions in the world that are also demanding interesting solutions, both in architecture and in infrastructure. And we have been, of course, fascinated by the border between Mexico and the United States as a contemporary laboratory where new solutions and innovative solutions should be applied. We have been working in a book called Hyperborder that is the most relevant data between the two countries. And then we went to a study of analyzing the most efficient designs of cities in the history of civilization. And this brings us to a concept of imagining a new city called the free city that we planned with the idea of building contexts in Latin America that invite foreign investors to try to create new areas that became new economical zones that create employments, but also that uh, give the opportunity of reducing immigration to developed countries. So Free City for us is a vision for the future of how we can actually mix programs. Uh, we can actually imagine a city that is about green spaces, about sustainable energy, about more efficient public time, and about more efficient solutions that can use technology not only to enhance people's life, but also to resolve some of the most important problems in immigration. That these are happening not only in countries like Central America, but also in countries like Africa, Morocco. So these are typological cities that will appear in the next 20 years. And we think that they should solve problems about inequality that exist in many of the contexts where a lot of people, and this is for me one of the challenges for design today, that we should try to to today's technology to solve some of the problems of the base of the pyramid. The base of the pyramid are people like Libya that self-build their own homes, that doesn't have a formal employment, people that are called the informal sector, that they are not paying taxes, not because they don't want, but because they haven't been part of the system. And I am analyzing this as a small exercise. We went inside Libya's house, talked with their family, realized of their needs, and I am betting that in the next 20 years, the families that represent Libya are going to become important economical powers as they will increase their incomes and as they will increase their capacity to become consumers in Central America and anywhere else in undeveloped contexts. So I am working now in a platform that is going to connect free time of designers together with lenders, a peer-to-peer -peer idea in which people like Libya can have better conditions for living and for the first time in the history they can be uh, and they are going to be accessible and they are going to be the people that have the opportunity to use design to have a better life. Thank you very much.